Hey everyone. So in America, there's gonna be a midnight launch for the Super Nintendo Classic Mini. Over here, you never really have midnight launches, but we had pre-orders, which apparently they didn't do in America. And usually when a store gets a pre-order in or a game ahead of release date over here, unless Nintendo states otherwise, they simply put it on the shelves. So I got a notification yesterday that my pre-order was in. This one. But I couldn't go yesterday, I was celebrating my 8th anniversary, my fiance and everything, so obviously you know, real life shit takes precedence. So today I went there and I picked it up. I'm not going to do a massive unboxing, I'm probably going to show the machine a little bit because I prefer talking about the games. So, I would like to pay a quick moment of respect to my fellow Juicy Loose comrade, Robert, who is currently in New York at the Nintendo store waiting for 26 fucking goddamn hours for his Super Nintendo Classic Edition. I hate it when people say SNES, what is that? In America always like spells everything out, like NES, SNES. Over here we just call it the Super Nintendo. It's easier. So, there's like 21 games in here. Over half of them are already own or finish, but that's why it gets interesting. So you got Super Mario World, I own it, you have Donkey Kong Country, F-Zero, those three I already own. Then there's like Secret of Mana, which my brother owns, so I didn't own it yet, but obviously, you know, it's still a childhood game because my brother owned it, I finished it, oh, god this time, such an amazing game. Castlevania 4, which I didn't own yet, it is my favorite Castlevania. You got uh, A Link to the Past, finished that a hundred thousand times. Then there's four games that I did not own yet. You got Super Ghouls and Ghosts, you got Contra 3, Punch-Out and Earthbound. Then we have Super Metroid, which I didn't own yet. We have Star Fox, which I did own. Final Fantasy VI, which is another game, just like Secret of Mana. I finished a lot because my brother owned it, but I didn't own it yet. Super Mario RPG, which I have like a bunch of these games, like um, Super Mario RPG and that kind of stuff. I And Secret of Mana, I do have them imported Japanese so that doesn't I can't play that because it's very text heavy. Super Mario Kart I own it, Yoshi's Island I own it, Street Fighter 2 I own it and then there's still like Kirby's Dream Course, Kirby Superstar and Mega Man X which I didn't own yet. Now the NES classic I kind of would have liked it for the novelty I like how it looked it must have been kind of cool but I owned um, about 99% of the games that were on there I owned them Nothing was really rare or valuable, so it doesn't matter. What makes this really interesting is the fact that from these games that I did not own yet, like Contra, Earthbound, Secret of Mana, Final Fantasy, Super Mario RPG, Mega Man X, these are all really fucking valuable games. They still cost a lot of money today. Like, the, this thing was like 80 bucks. Super Mario RPG alone is worth this already and the greatest thing about this is the 21st game, the secret game, which is Star Fox 2. Because that was never before released so that is like the greatest selling point of this but I feel it is not the only because not a lot of people would actually care about that. For me the greatest selling point of this is all these fucking rare games that are on there. Rare games and that is what the the eShop and the virtual console all should have been about rare games that people ask an enormous amount of money for and you put that on digitally it costs you nothing, it's gonna make you a lot of money and it's gonna make your clientele, your user base really happy like what I said a lot of these games are rare and valuable and not everybody likes to fork over that kind of money for that kind of shit I'm gonna open this up here this did not come with a C adapter, which you had to buy loose, which I didn't feel like buying loose right now, because why? Got like the instruction booklet and everything. Got like another great setting. A lot of people think like it's 80 bucks, like it's a little bit more expensive than the NES Mini. But the Super Nintendo Mini, it comes with two controllers. Open this up here. a bit weird. Like, 
There you go. The oh, brand new shoulder buttons. If you're like me and you're a retro gamer, you own a Super Nintendo, the main thing you will have is fucked up shoulder buttons. So these shoulder buttons, they feel really good. The touch, I don't know if it picks up on camera. The controller has a really weird gravelly rough texture. Apart from that, oh, it feels so good. Like brand new buttons, these shoulder buttons, they're really good. It comes with two of those. Which is funny because yeah, it has some multiplayer games. I feel there could be more multiplayer games on here. Because what do you got on here? Multiplayer wise, you got Super Mario World, Donkey Kong, F-Zero, you got Secret of Mana. Then you have Contra, Yoshi's Island, Street Fighter, Mario Kart, that's like 8. Yeah, let's say there's about half maybe. That's still pretty decent I guess, never mind. I didn't see anything. So now the greatest thing. There's a bunch of cables in here, like the HDMI cable. But the great thing here, of course, uh, let's get a bit closer, is what is in here. Damn, it's light. There we go. It is so creepy. Like, I don't have the NES Classic Edition notes. This is my first one. It is so creepy. Holding this, it makes me feel like a fucking giant. It's stupid, but that's what it's like. It looks amazing. I really like it. Let's set that the eject button. It doesn't work. Got the power button, reset button. I think the controller port is like over here. There we go. Very cool. So there you guys go. The unboxing, some history of some of these games. I don't want to do something super fancy or macro shit like some people do, you know. I just wanted to like hold this and talk about the games a bit. Thank you guys for watching. And stay real. And Robert, good luck.